Hello pilots and welcome back to another episode of Flying with Overkill F-16C Viper for DCS World and today we are going to be taking a look at a couple of things. We're going to be going through an introduction of the um, ALNQ Lightning 2 targeting pod as well as using it to employ the GBU-12 laser guided munition. Alright, so quite a bit that's going to be packed into this one. Um, I'm doing something a little different with the TGP, um, although I'll be showing quite a bit of it. I won't necessarily cover everything. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what comes up and if that's uh, something that we end up wrapping up today, cool. Uh, but you'll definitely get a great understanding of how to use it and you'll definitely know how to use it with the TGP today or uh, with the um, GBU. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on a couple of things that you want to know right away. So first off, the GB or the gosh, I'm going to say it all day long. Watch the TGP can only be loaded on station five right on the uh, F-16. So right down there is the only location that it can be loaded. So centered down the aircraft to station five, then you have five left and five right on the cheeks. Okay. So five right cheek stitch is the only place that it can be uh, loaded onto, which means we need to make sure we turn on the right hard point. Okay, and that starts the power up. To put the TGP on any one of your pages or any, either one of your MFDs, you can just simply select any position that you want it to be in. So for example, let's go ahead and do test here, right? And I'm gonna press test again, and I'm gonna change it to TGP. Now we're presented with the TGP off, First we'll get a TGP off, then we'll get a not timed out, and then after about four minutes or so, um, the TGP will display. Now, here's the caveat to this, okay? If you go into an air-to-ground mode, it will automatically reset the MFDs to the primary system, okay? In which case, you would have to repeat, uh, rinse and repeat the process. So again, test, TGP. And now, you can, as you can see, we're presented with a not timed out, not sensor of interest, all right? Um, let's see here. GBUs, the thing to be aware of while we're talking about that is laser codes for your laser guided bombs must be set in the mission editor prior to takeoff. So if it's not in your briefing or you have no other uh, information, I would say it's probably safe to assume that they're running on the default laser code of 1688. Okay, but uh, make sure you guys check your briefings when flying the F-16, especially in multiplayer missions, to be sure that you are aware of what your um, GBU-12 or any laser-guided munitions uh, laser codes are. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and jump in the seat here. <clears throat> and we're all wrapped up here, by the way. We'll go through the mission editor, and I'll show you guys how to manually change the laser code. <clears throat> Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check our laser code for the TGP. Okay, so we need to make sure it is set correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and lock our screen here. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. Oh, you know what? I didn't save it last night. Give me a second, guys. Just need to make a quick configuration change here. Options. Toggle. F9. Hit OK. All right. Okay, so now we have our camera locked up here. Now the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to go to list. And you can do this from any screen that's on the DED, doesn't matter, the list will always take you to the same place. Then we're gonna to go to zero for miscellaneous, and then we are looking for five laser, okay? So now you can see the TGP's code and the laser search code. So this is laser search track code if we were using a laser to find a target. So we're searching for someone else's laser, right? TGP code is the code that the laser itself that we are firing is going to emit. All right, so now I happen to know through uh, intelligence that our laser code is 1646 for the GBU-12s. So we're gonna go one, six, four, six, and press enter. All right, so our laser code has now been set for the TGP. So now we're gonna fire the correct code for our bombs to drop down on, okay? So we can go ahead and go return here. Now while we're here, Let's go ahead and take a look at the stores page. Hello. All right, so while we're looking at the stores page, you can see that we have four GBU-12s on board, okay? They're currently in profile one. Now, if you watch it, what we got here is if you profile two is CCRP with the same information. So that's a really quick way to switch between CCIP and CCRP. 
There's another way you can come up here and tap the OSB and select the desired launch mode. Okay. Or you can also press your nose wheel steering button uh, when in air to ground mode. So I'm going to tap it. Oops, sorry. Uh, you know what? I don't think we can do it with weight on wheels. Give me a second. All right, so the first thing I will tell you guys right now is that um, it probably would have worked just fine with weight on wheels. It helps when you have your profile activated for the particular aircraft. That way, when you push a button, it does what you want it to do. Okay, well, now that little history lesson's out of the way, let's go ahead and do a couple of things here right off the bat. Uh, I'm going to double check and make sure all of our systems are on as they should have been from startup, but we trusted the old computer to do it, so let's just make sure we're set and ready. All right, right hard point is active, which means we should have our TGP. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here at this point now is I'm going to go into air to ground mode. That way I don't have to worry about the screen switching. And let's go down and talk about our display like we were planning to do initially. All right, so as I was telling you guys, you have three different methods by which you can change quickly to CCRP. You have profile two, okay, and this is again referencing the GBU-12. You have the OSB up here where you can select the desired mode. And then you can also tap your nose wheel steering button. So this puts us into a gun strafing mode. And then we tap it again and we come back into CCRP. So again, another nice way to get into the proper position without having to worry about taking your hands off the controls. Uh, fusing is set to nose tail. We can do nose tail or nose. It's up to you guys. Um, both, I believe, will work just fine. I haven't had an issue using either one for the GBU-12. Um, you can set your single and distance apart. So first you have how many bombs do you want to release, how much distance do you want to pass be in between releases, and how many um, times do you want me to repeat that. Okay. Um, and with the GBU-12, I can't see why you'd want to do that, by the way. Um, it's pretty much a fire one at a time kind of bomb, um, as it is a precision-guided weapon. Okay? Um, so one bomb should hit everything that you needed to hit. All right? So with that being said, let's go ahead and start looking at some other information here. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do, obviously, since we're going to be using the GBU-12, is come up and talk about the HUD and see what we got here. All right, so first thing we have here is our bomb steering line, okay? Now this is based on the current location of our uh, TGP as it slaves to a um, the currently selected waypoint when in CCRP mode. And we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, but you have your bomb steering cue, okay? So what we the idea behind it is take this big, long vertical line and make sure you put it right smack in the middle of your flight path indicator and hold it there until your bomb is released. Here you have the bomb drop cue. What will happen is we get about 10 seconds away from the drop zone. This little line will start falling down. As it falls down, we want to make sure that we are pressing and holding our weapons release button. As long as we are holding that weapons release button at the time that this line falls into the flight path marker, the bomb will release. Down here, you have your currently designated uh, target area, or in this case, our CCRP queue. You can see we're in CCRP mode. Master arm is set. Okay. All right, so all pretty black and white stuff. Once you've flown any of the aircraft, you catch them all. So um, for those of you who are new to it, though, however, again, pretty simple stuff. When you get the X like that, it simply means that the view is out of the HUD's field of view. Okay, so if you have this square with the X in it and it's over here, it just means that your target is out over this region. It's out past the threshold of the HUD. All right, so let's go ahead and come down a second. Now, let's talk about how to get our TGP on target. If you are going to use a waypoint, which obviously is always recommended as your target zone, you have a couple of different things that are required. First off, you must be in air to ground mode. Second thing, you must have a weapon on board selected in CCRP mode. It must be in CCRP mode. And obviously you must have designated waypoints and master arm must be set. Okay. So those are all required in order for a waypoint to be selected as your target area. All right, so let's go ahead and check some of this out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is let's bring up our TGP. I don't need the fire. Well, here, we can use the, leave the fire control right where it is. We're going to bring it up on our right um, or our left MFD. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is hit DMS down, data management switch down. 
and make this our sensor of interest. Remember, date, data management switch down will cycle between the two screens if they're available. So for example, if we come over here to our HSD, okay, you can see that it's bouncing back and forth as I tap DMS down. Okay, we want it to be our TGP, so let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. All right, so what do we have here on the TGP right off the bat? You can see that we're currently in air to ground mode. No, this is not cyclable through here, but what you can do is either um, press the, uh, or set the TGP into a standby mode or continue in the currently selected. Manual operation is not currently available. You can change between your wide and narrow field of view. Remember, these four carats indicate what you're going to see when switched into the narrow field of view. Okay, the distance here as changes, you can see it's 191 meters here and 54 meters here, this distance from this point to this point. So as you come into the zoom mode, obviously this is going to be greatly reduced. When you expand out here, you can see this is the length of one of these arms. It's to give you a distance, help give you a reference of distance between the two locations. All right, override, this will put the uh, TGP into a standby mode. Once you disable override, it will automatically um, put the TGP back into its last known look or mode or location. Okay. Uh, control is not currently active. Then you have your three display modes. We have TV, white hot, and black hot. Okay. Now these are easily cyclable as long as the TGP is soy. You can go TMS left and cycle between them as well. Same thing with your, um, you know what, let me give you guys that for just a quick second. Let's go to adjust controls. You're going to want your field of view button if you don't have this already. You're going to want your cage uncage button if you don't have this already. Obviously your TDC slews, so however you're slewing your radar will work for slewing this. But you're also going to want these two, manual range counterclockwise and clockwise. This is how we're going to zoom the camera in and out. Okay, and you're also going to want however you want to sign this, but the uh, gun trigger first detent. Um, this will um, allow the laser to fire, so make sure you have that set as well. Okay, um, and then of course your weapons release and TMS and DMS switches. Hopefully you guys already have those mapped and ready though. Okay, all right. So being that said, you can use your field of view button on your HOTAS to also cycle between the wide and narrow fields of view. I forgot to mention that. Okay, let's go back into our TV mode. Um, the NT button does not work. Here we have snowplow mode, which we'll talk about in a minute, and cursor zero. Cursor zero, what this essentially does is when we slave our TGP to a waypoint, okay, it, that creates the um, sensor point of interest, okay, so it's called the SPI, is what we call it. Then what obviously we're going to do is we're going to use our TGP and we're going to slew the camera around, right, we're going to start looking for targets. Every time we moved the TGP from that initial waypoint location, that SPI, we created what's called a delta, okay, and the... TGP will remember that as its last known location. If you want to clear that, we would select CZ here, and now you can see we're back on the waypoint one. Okay, so what happened is the TGP moved, created this new delta spot when I was playing around with the um, uh, override control. Okay, so as we did this, okay, you can see now it's zoomed out, okay? Um, and you can see how far we're looking. And the reason why is because it, it basically bore sighted the camera. So the camera moved from our SPI and created a delta way out in front of the aircraft. Okay, and you can see this little diamond right here indicates the TGP's current position in relationship to the nose of the plane. Okay, or its central view. All right, so essentially what we did there is we created a delta from the SPI. The SPI being the waypoint that it was initially slaved to, the delta being this new point that the TGP was moved to from the SPI. So if we want to very quickly get back onto our uh, waypoint as the uh, view location, we simply come through here and hit CZ. Okay, and we can clear those out. And CZ will be uh, displayed anytime that there are deltas detected. Okay, and you can see that we have TGT here. This means indicates that we have a target waypoint. And uh, if we were in nav mode, for example, I believe it should say um, uh, steer point, if I remember correctly. But I mean, I don't use it in nav mode. So <laughs> um, gray off. Okay, this is our gray scale. Okay, if you guys want to use that as a um, it's to help you with an identifier is determining what's gray, what's hot, etc. I don't use it. All right, so for example, at this point, now we've created another delta, by the way, here, guys. So if we press CZ, 
we're going to go back into the cursor zero mode, okay? And then here you have AGC, which stands for automatic gain control. You can hit MGC for manual gain control and adjust the display levels yourself with the gain button up here and these level switches here. However, I don't see that they necessarily do a whole lot at this moment. That's, I'm sure that's something that's currently being worked on. Oh, although, however, this is TV mode. Let's see how it works here. Oh, yes. That would explain it. We were in TV mode instead of white hot or black hot, which, by the way, I find works really well on these displays. These displays are really nice to see those with. Okay. Oh, did it again. Boom. Okay. So now that we're back into CZ mode, though, however, let me show you what our next part here. So now what it's looking at is steer point one. Okay. Now, steer point one is not our target zone. Steer point two is. Steer point one is our IP. So what I'm going to do is cycle to the next waypoint and look what we got over here with our TGP again. So now I'm going to hit our manual range uh, uh, clockwise and counterclockwise buttons that I was telling you guys a moment ago to zoom in and out. Now clockwise or counterclockwise for me is um, the left button. So you can see we're by default we are zoomed as far back as possible. So now all I can do is zoom in. Now I recommend tapping it at first unless you actually have a rotor because it moves quite a bit. Like here's just a tap. Okay, I'm gonna tap it and let go. Okay, so it, it, it moves quite a bit. And if you hold that sucker, um, it'll really get away with you. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into our narrow field of view. And now we can see our trucks down here. So there's white hot. There's black hot, which works really nicely. And we can pull that back a little bit. There we go. Makes things a little bit easier to see. Uh, that does not. There we go. That's kind of nice. That works out real well. Okay. So moving around here a little bit, the next thing that we have is you can see this area. This indicates that we are in area track. If we hit TMS up short, that now changes us to a point track. Um, and uh, TMS back um, or down puts us back into area track. Okay, so TMS down is area, TMS forward, point. Okay, and remember TMS left, you can still cycle the different view modes. Okay, so let's go ahead and stay in black hot, I think. All right, so now we've identified a target here. All right, so we found our target. We can just basically leave it here, lock it up. It will automatically generate this as a SPI. Okay. Now, if we want to get our laser ready, you can see the laser code is currently 1688 for laser search. Okay, so don't let that fool you guys. All right, you also have your north uh, reference bearings and everything like that. Um, and then you have the actual position. If you were calling out exact coordinates um, for a airstrike or something like that or a fellow wingman, okay, you have your coordinates. This is exactly where the TGP is currently looking. Okay, so you could call these out and that's going to be in degrees, minutes, and decimal minutes. Um, and you could relay these off and, and hopefully your wingman will be able to use that to acquire their target. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start planning an, an airstrike here. So I'm going to zoom our camera back out so it doesn't get all funky. First thing we do is come up, bring the laser arm, and you can see this L has now appeared. This means that the laser is now ready to fire. And this is where stage one of our trigger will come into play in order to actually fire it. Once we actually fire the laser, you'll see this L start blinking. Now, because we are one aircraft doing the whole shebang, what essentially is going to happen is we're going to line ourselves up using our bomb steering line. Once we drop the bomb, then I'll fire the laser. Now, let's go ahead and see that all in action again. And this time we're going to use it to employ our bomb. So, first thing is, master arm is checked, laser arm is set. Let's go ahead and go to air to ground mode. Set steer point two as our target location. Go and uh, pick our TGP location, which MFD, okay? We're gonna go ahead and set our TV, or our uh, TGP as the sensor of interest by hitting DMS down. TMS left to set our particular desired view setting, okay? Now we're going to make sure that our bombs are set in CCIP mode. Now we can do that by either using the OSB or our nose wheel steering button, which we'll do that. There we go. CCRP is set. We need to make sure our laser code is set correctly for the TGP. So it's going to be list zero for miscellaneous, five for laser. 1646 is what we're going to be looking for for our particular bomb today. So that's a real quick enter. Remember, this one is laser search track code. So that references this number here it is not our actual laser designation code. That is the top number. 
All right, we can go ahead and go to return now. And let's go ahead and select our desired steer point location as our target. We've already done that, good. And DMS down again to make our sensor of interest. Let's go ahead and use our field of view button to lock in on some targets here. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in a bit more. Now, as we approach the target area, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we monitor the TGP location and make sure it's still over our target. Okay, that gets pretty critical. So I'm gonna go TMS forward to go into point track mode, hopefully keep our TGP on our target, but we'll be monitoring it as we approach. All right, so let's go ahead and back out, unpause the sim. Let's go ahead and bring the brightness down just a little bit here on this. Let's jump onto our uh, bomb steering line here. Again, flying that right in the center of our flight path marker for as best as we can here. Don't have to be perfect because we are using laser guided munitions, but the less correction the bomb has to make, obviously the more likelihood of a uh, direct hit. All right. And you can also see down here, we're currently at two minutes and 15 seconds to impact. Again, CCRP mode, arm is set, laser set. Here is our CCRP targeting box, okay? Let's go ahead and speed time up and reduce that a little bit. Watching our TGP down here to make sure we maintain visual contact of the target. Let's go ahead and start backing our camera out just a little bit, okay? We don't wanna get so far out that we can't see. We're now at 40 seconds to impact, or to drop, excuse me. At 10 seconds, we'll see our bomb steering line start, or our bomb steering cue start, uh, bomb drop cue start falling down. At which point, once it starts moving, that's when we'll start, uh, holding our weapons release button. Sorry, brain fart there. There we go. Back on track here. All right, so we're at 10 seconds here coming up. Bomb line's dropping, holding weapons release. Making sure TGP's on target, looking good. Bombs away, firing the laser. And you can see there where it says laser L1646 underneath point. That lets you know what code it's firing, so right on point. And just waiting for our shack. And there's our shack. Target destroyed. All right, guys. So that is the simple way of using the TGP. Well, not just a simple way. I think the only way of using the TGP with the GBU-12 laser precision guided munitions. Um, it's a lot of fun to use it. Uh, I find I was pleasantly surprised because I honestly thought that it was going to be harder to use because the MFDs are so small in comparison to like the F-18 where you get this big, you know, 65 inch, uh, you know, screen in front of your face when you're trying to use it. But I actually think the clarity is a little bit better on the F-16's MFDs. So it's, it's a really interesting toss up. Okay. So now if we wanted to recenter our target, for example, our TGP, we come down here at CZ zero or cursor zero. Let's bring it back around. And you can do this pretty quickly now, once you find a target. Now I'm tapping my counterclockwise manual range button here a little bit. There we go. Let's grab one on the other side here. Oh, wrong way. All right, target selected to the TMS forward. Let's do the same thing. We're just gonna rinse and repeat here. Pull a little hard, bring the aircraft around here, but we should have plenty of time. Made sure to give us quite a bit of distance there. And there's our targeting box. There's our steering line. And we're basically right on point and we're 30, three seconds to weapons release. So 
I haven't changed anything else. All we've done is use the TGP. Went back to our center point, found a new target. TMS uh, up to point track. There's our 10 seconds to release. Bomb release line coming down. Holding weapons release right now. Waiting for it. There's the bomb away. Firing the laser. Kind of cool, you can see the missile or the bomb uh, adjusting track. And that's a hit. Shack again. All right, guys. So, real simple stuff. Last thing I'm going to show you guys, real quick, guys, is we'll jump into the mission editor and I will show you how to manually edit the laser code designation for your GBU 12s in the F 16. So, stand by one more minute and we're just about done here. All right, so inside the mission editor, all you would simply do is select your F-16, and we're going to come down here to the point of ellipses right here, and here is where you set the digits for your laser code. Okay, now you have LAU ready to fire, whether it be a single or a ripple release. Uh, again, with the GBU-12 or any laser-guided munitions like that, I wouldn't recommend doing multiple, as you can only designate one target at a time. So, for example, we can absolutely pick a off two GBUs, I would imagine. I can't see an issue where that would, wouldn't work, but they would likely go after the same target. Okay, so that's kind of a waste. All right, so what you're doing here is you're looking for the X. The X is the digit that you're changing. The first one is constant, never changes. Okay, but you can change the last three. So in this case, one X would be 16. Then there's our four, one, six, four, and then six. Remember I told you the laser code that we just used in the tutorial was 1646. Okay, that's how I got that. All right, and that's pretty much it, guys. Um, not a whole lot else to it. Like I said, just remember the, uh, the parameters for using a waypoint as your guidance. Uh, waypoint TGP guidance requires air-to-ground mode, master arm set, a um, CCRP-capable munition, um, and it should work just fine. Now, in the next one, we'll take a look at using the TGP with some CCIP releases, which you might find a little interesting. I find it more tricky than not, um, but it's still kind of fun to see it in action. All right, so stay with me, guys, and we'll be back for a little bit more. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.